Hey, Durbin, try and pick the Nielsen family out of that bunch. Be kind, Alana. We might need them next sweeps. Showtime in 15. And 10. Audio check, Alana. Welcome to the show, folks. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll kiss your brain goodbye. And five, four, and three, and two. Good evening. This is Alana Powers. Behind me are the forbidding walls of the Haviland State Penitentiary. Within those walls, a man waits to die. Death awaits us all, but most of us don't know when. Lawrence Harwin Dvorak knows exactly when he will die. At 11 o'clock tonight, in exactly four hours, Lawrence Harwin Dvorak will be strapped into the electric chair. Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, diabolical genius, master manipulator, conjurer, charmer. The man the FBI called the most prolific killer in American history. In four hours, he will go to his final judgment. But in just one hour, I will be in that cell with Lawrence Harwin Dvorak. You will be there with me. Maybe we will get inside that bizarre mind. Maybe we will find out why he committed those cold-blooded torture slayings, crimes that sickened America. The questions will be asked. Join us. In one hour, the enigma that is Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, his last hours on Earth. Your reporter, Alana Powers, live from death row. Oh. Maybe that'll keep their sweaty little hands off the remote control. You know, Durbin? When I first started in this business, I was afraid of the camera. So this news director said to me, imagine a friendly face on the other side of the camera. I did, and it didn't work. So I've used your friendly face, Joel. That's why I've kept you around all these years. But lately, that face hasn't been so friendly. Maybe you just better remember who your meal ticket is. Then this is as good a time as any to give my notice. I quit. Hey! All right, let's get rolling. I said I didn't care. Well, that would be consistent. Come on, you two. Stay out of this, Roy. It's none of your business. If it's about business, it's my business. But out, Durbin. It's personal. You know, I remember our first shoot. Babies born with drug addictions. You cried on camera. Yeah, I cried a lot then. It was unprofessional. Well, it was human. 
made you famous. A few tears these days would be appreciated. Just how many times do you think someone can do that? You have no idea what that cost me. Got us ratings. I'm not gonna open my veins every week and bleed for the sake of your ratings or mine. Do you understand? If you can't cry, then fake it. Uh, there's the warden. Miss Powers. Hi. Mr. Durbin. Hi. You folks are going to come at a worse time. I have 40 or 50 inmates down with food poisoning. Oh. The dispensary's up to its hips and alligators. I'm going to turn you over to Sergeant Lockhart here. He'll set you up, and I'll join you later on as soon as the dust settles. Which one will be coming in with you now? Well, well actually, Warden, uh, we have to talk about that because we just can't do this with a one-man crew. There are technical difficulties. Oh, now, that I don't give a tinker's damn about. I don't care why the governor agreed to this, but you have permission to enter South Block Annex with two people. Two. I don't care if it's her and her Aunt B. Now, those are the rules. You play by them when you have to get out of the game. Warden Volkey, I really sympathize with your problems. You remember my series about prison overcrowding, AIDS in prison, racism within the prison system. I understand the pressure you're under. Now, if you'd like, we could broadcast a statement from you regarding these issues. It could have quite an impact. No thanks, lady. I did that kind of thing when I was young and stupid. I've been kicked out of three state institutions for being a squeaky wheel. In your shows about AIDS and overcrowding and the other bull, people get more straight information off of cereal boxes. You don't give a sweet damn about prison problems or my problems. And when you go into South Annex tonight, you'll take one person with you. You got it? We got it, Warden. Sergeant Lockhart will take you in. I'll join you as soon as I can. You're coming into my cell block. I'm God in there, and you're just dirt under my shoes. Do not make my life difficult. Let's check in. your show all the time. I, I mean, I, I tape it and I watch it when I get home instead of the news. You know, I pull out my TV tray and have a couple of chicken pot pies and I watch it in those wackos that you interview. Oh, thank you, but I don't consider them wackos. Oh, well, yeah, yeah I mean, sure, but you, you know what I mean. You know that show you did on those, those porno starlets? I mean, they came off like regular right, chicks. Right, I'm... Sheehan, coming in. Show yourself. The executioner's been here. Uh, check things out, replace some fuses. Frisker, good. Griffith, check out the equipment. I don't know what half this stuff is. I mean, they could be smuggling a Patriot missile in here for Let's all I Let's just know. get it in there. Uh, Miss Powers, could I have an autograph, please? Sure. You'll love this show. Sheehan. What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Making eleven fifty-three an hour and a dental plan. Start feeding me some signal. Yeah, we're getting close here. 
Mr. Lockhart, you could use the desk right here, please. Is it Durbin? See why you're quitting? It's not Durbin. Well, I know he's a kind of sleaze, but he gets results. It's not Durbin. I always work with you. in LA have their feed. Now we got our pre-taped intro coming up in 30. Why don't you give me a one minute teaser and uh, then we'll go to a commercial. Joel, I'm sorry about earlier, but blame it on PMS, the ratings. Can we talk about this later, please? It's not you, it's the show. The show? Yeah, we used to be a news show. Well, what are we now? A circus. Good evening. I'm Alana Powers, and this is the electric chair. In exactly four hours, Lawrence Harwin Dvorak will be strapped into this instrument of death. A man especially hired for the job will pull this switch, and 2,000 volts of electricity will enter the body of Lawrence Harwin Dvorak. It will literally cook his brain. His muscles will contract in violent spasm. Some strong enough to break bone, it will most definitely kill him. In the ways of death, electrocution is one of the most unpleasant, but I suppose that's the point. There are 26 steps from this chair to this cell. 26 steps, not a long way to go, but in here the inmates call it the 26 step mile. If you have to walk it for the last time, it must seem like a mile. And in this cell, we have the enigma that is Lawrence Harwin Dvorak. A droid at wearing the mask of sanity and charm, he is also responsible for the bludgeoning, strangling, and mutilation of at least 27 innocent women. What is he thinking about right now? Is he re-examining his past? Is he repentant? What does he have to say for himself? The questions will be asked. Tonight, live from death row, I'm Alana Powers, and we'll be right back. And we're gone. Commercials. Fix your hair, there's a little funny fly away on the side. Mr. Lockhart, we are ready for Mr. Dvorak, please. Same straight once in your back and lock. television history. It's very important to you, isn't it? Your place in history, so to speak. Well, I think we all like to be remembered, don't we? Yes, I think we do. Where's the warden? Well, the dispensary, I think. Some kind of emergency. Oh, well, I'm disappointed. I was hoping he'd be here. He'll be here for your big moment. 
We'll be going over the same territory as in our phone conversation, so just relax. Nothing different than what we've discussed. Okay. Unless you have a surprise for our audience. Surprise? We've been known to have a few. Ted Bundy did in his last few hours. <laughs> Theodore. I mean, 40 new bodies and where they're buried. Pornography made me do it. I killed Hoffa. I have Elvis hostage in a bunker in Terre Haute. Mm, something like that? Yes. No, nothing like that. Is that really necessary? Well, actually, it is. Um, an inmate at cell block 11 killed his lawyer. Just rammed a number two lead pencil through his ear. 15 seconds counting down, Lana. Thanks, Joel. I wish I had another camera in there. All right, you got 10. And nine. And pre-taped intro will end in five, four, three, two. Good evening. I'm Alana Powers, and we're live from death row. With me is Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, convicted mass murderer, contemplating his last hours on Earth. With hopes for a last-minute reprieve dashed by the governor's vehement statement this morning, with appeals all the way to the Supreme Court exhausted, with the certainty of that very deadly chair behind us. Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, what do you have to say for yourself? Well, in some ways, it's a comfort to be certain of my future. So you can joke about your own mortality. Hmm. I suppose that's admirable. But you've always been very glib, Mr. Dvorak. What do you have to say to the families of the women that you killed? Nothing. I have nothing to say to them. I never did. Mr. Dvorak, you are a brilliant man. Self-taught lawyer, contributor to various legal journals. You've represented over 16 inmate appeals. You even represent all the people in the cells behind us. And you've racked up an amazing number of appeals and delays on their behalf. All that success must be very heady stuff. And yet, with your own case, with your own life, you've lost. How does that feel? How does that feel? Gentlemen, I, Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, have taken command of death row. I have a gun, 
hostages, and other weapons. Now, I mean no harm, but as I have demonstrated in the past, I am not reluctant to administer punishment. Now, no one will attempt to enter death row. No one. Even the slightest indication of attack will result in violence. Now this broadcast will be made available to all stations and networks, and there will be no attempt to interrupt this broadcast, even the slightest indication of interruption that is not at my direction will also result in violence. So, for the time being, consider me a public service announcement with a gun. Turn it off. This is Olana Powers reporting to you from the death chamber of the Haviland State Penitentiary. I and my cameraman, Joel Knox, have been taken hostage. The why and wherefore, I do not know. We do know that one of the guards has been shot. It does not appear to be a fatal wound at this moment. Our lives are in the hands of Lawrence Harwin Dvorak. Mr. Dvorak, Kenneth Nivens, Geraldo Reyes, Richard Silsby, and Lorraine Biella. And now, Mr. Dvorak. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight you're going to see something totally unique. I want to see how I look. Uh, Kenny, go fetch your television, will you? Mm -hmm. You want the monitor on? No, thank you. They can play with the image on the monitor, can't they, Miss Powers? Whoa! <laughs> oh, yeah, Kenny, come here. Mm. Sit here. Down here. Okay, let's start over. Uh, Ms. Powers, introduce me to the audience again, please. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, convicted mass murderer, psychopath, our captor. Let's try it again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, man of the hour. Thank you, Alana. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight you are going to see something totally unique to television. The truth. Reality. Not as it is advertised, but, well, the way it is. See, we here on death row have arranged this forum not to escape. We know that is futile. You're all going to fry! Now, tonight we are going to discuss the death penalty as it is practiced here in these United States. I'm sure it will be a lively discussion. We have a variety of opinions. You got that right. And after a thorough discussion, uh, moderated by our Miss Solana Powers, you will see someone die. Yes, tonight, someone will die. And you will see it right there in your living room. Damn straight. It won't be a sanitized TV series death. No, this is the real thing. Blood will flow onto your carpet. The death penalty, live from death row. I'm Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, and we'll be right back. Albert! Albert, you interrupt me again, and I'll let Reyes stick that bullet out. I like that a whole hell of a lot, man. <clears throat> and maybe I'll let Silsby and Reyes take you back into that cell, give you all a little privacy. <clears throat> hey, pal, now let's get our signal straight. When I say turn that off, you turn it off. Otherwise, we put it on the tripod over there, and then we don't need you at all. 
I catch my drift. You're running the show. Guess that makes me the producer. Whatever you say, Mr. Producer. Is that sarcasm? Not from me. You're the boss, you got the gun. Well, I guess that's not the usual way someone becomes a producer. If I'm setting a new horrible precedent, I apologize. It appears that we have lost transmission to Haviland State Penitentiary. Well, uh, run the file tape. We'll run some filler until we're back. Look, I don't care what you do, just keep us on the center. Look, I'm on TV. Hey, look at me, man. I look good, huh? The first lawyer gave me that suit. The longest occupant of Haviland's death row is Kenny Nevins, 26, who has been in the same cell for the last 10 years since his homicide conviction, where he, <laughs> though 15, was tried as an adult. The star of death row, of course, is Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, convicted of 27 gruesome torture murders, thought responsible for many more. He was scheduled to die in the electric chair at 11 o'clock tonight. And Lorraine Viella called the modern-day Medea, who murdered her own children in front of their father. Uh, we are, at this uh, very moment, trying our oh, best man. to find out Turn more information off. about the two guards. And oh, and looks like we have a hit. This will rate higher than your biggest show. Now, what was your biggest show? Satanic Cheerleaders, was it? God, that was a fine piece of journalistic work, if I ever saw one. You used to have her job, didn't you? Yeah, I worked with her in Baltimore for about a year. She's good at the desk, not so good in the field. Oh, confess. You would give your eye teeth if you could have her job and be in the real news again. Hmm? Are adding TV critic to your resume, Mr. Dvorak? I have my own news show. Oh, boy. You used to cover the news. Now, I mean, uh, hookers versus housewives. Satanism in your own backyard. Teenage sex surrogates. <clears throat> Alana. You don't represent the news. You just pimp for your audience. Well, Larry, how about letting me pimp for you? Let's do our interview, one-on-one, -on -one, pimp and provocateur. Joel, turn us on. Come on, Mr. DeVore. We're rolling. Durbin, we're back. Don't give me any static about not being ready. We're on and rolling. <clears throat> no, wait a minute. Uh, you'll have ample opportunity to interview me later. Lorraine, honey? Meet the press. Oh, you know, I don't want to talk right now. Oh, well, you remember our agreement. What agreement is that? That we love each other yeah. until the day we die. Oh, that's amusing. That's really amusing. What are you doing with that psychopath? I want to die. Why? Why not? I'm going to die anyway. And the waiting... The waiting is driving me around the bend. They tell you you're gonna die. The, the jury tells you, the judge, the warden. But then you wait. There's a part of the punishment, the waiting. I've been here for three years. But you filed the appeals. No, I didn't. They filed them for me. The do-gooders. This way, I pick the time. And I, I get it over with. Finally. As I did just deserve to die. It's justice. And I accept it. So, let's do it. I think our audience can understand the grief and the pain you felt when your husband left you. No, they can't. You helped your husband start a very successful plumbing business. You sacrificed. You loved him, I'm sure. But, but to murder your own two children in front of him... He was going to take them away from me. My little babies. But women go through marital crises every day, and they don't... Uh, just let me die. Please. 
I'm trying to understand how you could kill your own children. I, I want the audience to, to try and see how a woman can, can do this. Well, this is an interesting question here. Now, was Lorraine Viella sane when she killed her children? I wasn't crazy. I knew what I was doing. No, even the societal taboos against murder, especially infanticide, and knowing the full consequences, how can anyone in their right mind commit murder? I mean, you'd have to be crazy. And if you are crazy, according to this system of jurisprudence, you can't be found guilty. That's a paradox. I did it. I am not crazy. And I want to die. Lorraine, you okay? I want to say it is cruel and unusual punishment to make the only damn window we got face Big Mama Payback. I think you'll have to explain that for our audience, Mr. Silsby. The chair, you know? I can't look out the only damn window I got without looking at that thing. That ain't cruel and unusual, what is? Oh, shut up, Selsby. You'll get your chance. Man, don't tell me to shut up. I'm sick and tired of taking orders from you. You can go to hell with your damn shut up. Well, you're pretty good at taking orders from the guards. Yeah? Well, I don't like it. And you ain't no guard. So why do you take orders from the guards? Yeah, they got billy clubs. What about the ones on the wall? They got guns. Yeah, well, what the hell do you think this is, you need? Neanderthal! Hmm? Do I have to put a bullet through that vacuum of a brain of yours to prove it? Now, do I? I suggest you follow my orders, Mr. Selsby. OK, ma'am. It's your plan. That's right. It's my plan. Excuse me. Excuse me. If you don't mind. Hi, Kenny. Do you mind if I call you Kenny? Ma'am. Um, um, you think my mom was watching? If she's concerned about you, I'm sure she's watching. You want to say something to her? Ask him how old he is. How old are you? I'm 26 last July. I guess I won't make it to 27. Ask him how old he was when he got here. You know, a good producer lets his people do their job. Mr. Dvorak, if you want to do the interview, you go right ahead. I'll watch. Oh, sorry, I overstepped my bounds here, didn't I? Yeah, uh, please proceed, Miss Powers. Now, you were convicted when you were 15 and tried as an adult, is that correct? Because of what they said I did. Tell us what happened. Pepper Michaels, he was a kid from my block. Uh, he's here too. Uh, only he's in lockup because he had a better lawyer than me. Pepper and me, we was high. We stoned, you know, and we wanted some munchies, but we didn't have no money. And the fellow behind the counter, you know, he wouldn't give us no credit. You know, you know all I wanted was some munchies. And... He wouldn't give you any credit, so you killed him. fella got all chopped up. And I knew him. Ozzy. He kept his uh, meat cleaver right behind the meat counter. He, he got 
chopped up with his own cleaver. And you did it. I guess so. And now you want to die. Yeah. Why? Why, Kenny? You still have an appeal pending, don't you? Mr. Pollos, my appeal goes through. Hey, I mean, look, I ain't never gonna see those streets again except as an old man. I mean, my appeal goes through. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I might get bumped off the road. Yeah, and get life in the lockup. Life in the lockup, man. Guy like me, hey. I'm gonna last two seconds in there. I'm fresh meat to those guys. You got a choice, man. 20 years in the lockup. We're dead. Which would you choose now? I'd rather be dead. <laughs> Miss Powers? I think we'll go to the local stations now. I insist. How you doing, Lockhart? You pig? <laughs> Riz? Riz, I got kids, man. I'm all they got. I, I, don't, I don't care what you do. Just don't hurt me. You know, my kids, they took it hard when their old man ran off, you know? Riz, I got that letter to your mama that time. Comprende? Don't beg. That's how these animals get their cookies. When did you give us anything? We asked you for promos, you gave us diddly. Alana is online. What? Later. I can hear you if you can hear me. Talk to me, Roy. Get the warden. Alana, I'm getting the warden. He's got a SWAT team here. We can get you out of there. Okay, well, just, just tell us where to go when you send in the stormtroopers. We can go into a cell or something. Just let us know. Naughty, naughty. Alana. Alana! Where's Carl? Keep an eye on him, will you? If you don't want to go through with this, I can take you out of the equation. circus. Look at me. What do you want? Besides good skin and a flat stomach? God, I hate my hands. Sometimes they don't belong to me. to sleep without dreaming. I want to sleep 
and never wake up. Well, I can give you that. I'll help you, no matter how much it hurts me. Nothing hurts you. I know. Hey, uh, honey, uh, is there any time you do me? Excuse me? Well, you, uh, you, you did Lorraine and, uh, and the Black Punk. <laughs> is it my turn now? Why don't, you, why don't you do me, huh? All right, all right. Okay, Mr. Reyes, how many years have you been on death row? Uh, three years. And what was the crime that brought you in here? I, I uh, served my country. I, 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 was, uh, I was in Vietnam in 71, 72 with the uh, 4th Infantry. And, uh, and my country, the United States government, uh, they taught me how to kill, see? But then they never unteach me, you know? They dropped me in the hood and, uh, and never untaught me, you know? So, uh, I mean, uh, one time it's, it's, it's all right to kill anybody that gets in my way. <laughs> In fact, uh, in fact, they even give you medals for it. But uh, then, uh, then I come home and uh, I don't get squat, you know? People, they, they, they spit at me. I mean, uh, I never killed no babies, right? I made them, though. <laughs> I made a lot of them. I tell you, those good women, man, they, they really liked old Ray's. They liked them beaucoup. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they did. But you still haven't explained to us why you're in here. You know how long it's been since I've had a woman? I got a lot of juices oh. back there. I've been, I've been looking at you ever since you got in here. It's a... Sorry, Mommy, to you all, so little. Oh, that's enough. You're finished. Oh, I'm not finished. I'm just beginning, see? Because I know you like me, and you like men like me. That's why you come in here, don't you? Huh? You like dangerous men. They, they turn you on, huh? I bet you go to bars and, and you cruise for the rough trade. Stop him! All right, this is what you give your audience every week. Sex and violence. This, this is your meatball puppy. Oh! Oh! Do something, damn it! All right, all right. What are you doing? Look, help her. I thought she was your friend. You don't hide behind the camera. I don't need any help. Oh, you don't? I thought you just asked me for help. I mean, don't make excuses for his cowardice. Don't go for the bait, Joel. I'm just doing my job. Oh, well, don't quote the Nazis to me. I mean, what does it take to get you out from behind that camera? Huh? Just do something, he's gonna rape her. Get out of my face. What? Let me do my job. Oh, oh not so safe back right there, is it? Mm. I think you can do something, and if I think you can do something, and so do about 50 million other people. Do you get the picture? <laughs> now, say. You feel this at your head? Yes. You know what it is? Yes. Okay, there's a light on your camera. Yeah. Turn it on. Okay. Okay. Sells me, help me. Reyes! Please. 
Listen, please. Is that your good leg? I thought you were gonna kill someone, Dvorak! Quit playing games! Do it! Or is it all just for Why are you in such a hurry to die? You talk good, Dvorak, but you ain't got no guts! Come on, no guts, no glory, Dvorak! Hush, hush! The hell with you, Dvorak! I ain't afraid of you. Bring the camera over here. There. Turn it on. Mr. Lockhart, Albert has been in this situation before, haven't you, Albert? See, Albert's first year here at the penitentiary was an eventful one. There was a riot in cell block 11. Uh, prisoners took hostages. Albert had just been at the penitentiary oh, three months, I think it was. He, fresh young man, right out of military service. Heard he was one of the good guys. Used to treat all the uh, prisoners like human beings. <coughs> I learned better. Mm -hmm. yeah, Albert was taken hostage. They didn't hurt him at first, but then Negotiations broke off, and, well, the inmates got a little restless. All right, Dvorak. I'll shut up. Just turn the camera off. Well, I'm sure that the viewing audience wants to hear your story, Albert. You see, for the next 17 days, until negotiations were completed, Albert became... Albert became what Miss Powers termed in one of her shows a sex slave. A real <laughs> sex slave. How about that, Alana? I mean, repeatedly raped in all possible ways, if the records are accurate, for 17 days. Some of it must have been pretty brutal, too, because, well, Albert was in the hospital after that for about a month. One of his knees was permanently damaged. But that was just physical. I'm sure the real damage was psychological and emotional. Now I know that you didn't want this to become public knowledge, but, well, I'm sure that your drinking buddies and your pals and your, your fellow guards will commiserate with you and sympathize with your plight now that they know that you have been a victim of a repeated and brutal rape. Until you developed a great hatred for the prisoners. And for the prison itself, I'm sure. Question is, why did you come back to work the very location of your shame? so as he could get some payback. Correct, Mr. Silsby. Yes, because we all know of another riot about five years ago. Hmm? And uh, when negotiations broke off there and the guards were ordered to attack, you were on the wall with a rifle, weren't you? And the guards were ordered to fire, but fire over the heads of the inmates. But nine men in the yard were hit. Four died, and three of them were leaders in the previous riot. 
There was an investigation and ballistics tests, but there was only one man reprimanded, Albert. Hmm. He was given three months suspension for murder. Bastard. Treats us like animals. He just as bad, but he gets away with it. Well, I can understand why Albert treats us the way he does. It's simple anger. And I can even understand the foolish act of bringing a loaded pistol into a place where weapons are forbidden. That is simple fear. What I cannot understand are the minds that excused the murders that he committed. Turn it off. I think it's time we test the equipment. Do it. Yeah, I want to see him fry. No. Albert, say I haven't got the guts. If I throw this switch, will that prove the point? I want to get it over with, now. I want to die. All right. So I'll, I'll go get ready. You can't let her. Can I see? Oh, I'm sorry. No, Kenny. Come back, please. Let's put the camera right here. I don't think that's a good idea. All the voltage probably overload the camera, wipe out the picture. Okay. Uh, how about right here? It's the same difference. It's uh, when we get. Uh, Miss Powers, uh, do you have any um, uh, makeup stuff in your bag? Uh, Lorraine, uh, she wants to look nice. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. No. Kenny, I'll tell you what, let me take it to her myself. Lorraine. No more questions. No, no more questions. I, I brought you some makeup. I want to pray. Just leave me alone, please. Thanks for the makeup. I never really use much, just a little mascara, some lipstick, maybe some eyeliner. <laughs> Why don't you let me help you with that? It's okay, Lorraine. Close your eyes and pray if you want to.
What are you doing here with us? I have no choice. I'm a hostage. Yeah, but you came here willingly. Why? I wanted to show my public. Why? Well, it's my job. The ratings. Do you like your job? Why? I used to like my job. I used to make a difference. Can I ask you a favor? A dying woman's last request? When I'm dead, when this is all over with, don't go prying into my life anymore. Give me some peace. Please. You're going to make her do this? It's her right. It's her choice. You tell me that that woman means nothing to you? Uh, Mr. Dvorak, uh, I'd like to, I want to go with Lorraine. All right, Kenny. Good red lightning, huh? <laughs> Sorry, kid, only one at a time in the chair. <laughs> Unless you want to sit in her lap. This is not funny. <laughs> Lorraine, please. Change your mind again, Lorraine. No. I'll use I'll use that if it's okay. Yes? Yeah, someone's gonna have to show me how it works. Hey, I'll show you. Now let me. Lorraine. Hmm. Can I go with you? I wanna go too. I wanna die with you. Last statements or requests? Regrets? No. Uh, I wish that, uh, that I, uh. What, Kenny? I never went out with a girl. I never had that, uh. I just wonder what it's like. Uh, no sweat, kid. Hold on. You would know how to use this. <laughs> there you go, kid. Why don't you show everything, man? Hey, everything and some I ain't even done. Yes, man, I, I, I had that. I, I'm talking about before that. Decency place. Okay, uh, I'll do the introduction, then you can do your usual song and dance, right? Turn it on. I refuse. Turn it on.
Okay, Mr. and Mrs. America, this is what you've been waiting for, the execution of Lorraine Viella and Kenny Nevins, live from death row. Hey, I said turn it on. No. Look, I want people to see this. I won't film it. You won't film it. Reyes, give me your weapon. Crude. But it does bring back memories. It is so much better when you're in love. Help me, Kenny. My hands don't seem to do anything I tell them to anymore. Turn it on. Don't do it, Joel. Do it, Joel. I can't. It's obscene. You want to see obscene? something nice, okay? Kid didn't do too good on himself. What? Show him. Show your public. Show him! This is uh, Lana Powers, live from death row. Uh, Lorraine Viella is dead. Kenneth Nevins is dead. They were condemned to death for crimes against the state. They have taken their lives in vain. Led by a murderous psychopath, we're they shot. Lawrence Harwin Dvorak, reporting from death row. Lorraine Viella and Kenneth Nevins have taken their own lives in order to deny the state that so-called privilege. And they have cheated you, the public, and the government, and what some people call justice. And they have cheated every politician who thinks that more executions will garner more votes in the next election. And in so doing, they have won a private victory. Off. Come on, Alana, we have to get our act together. You talk, I film, that's the way it's always been, but you're not talking. I liked her. Alana. I have nothing to say. Since when? I really liked her. Wake up, Alana. This Come is on. what you wanted to see, isn't it? A lot of good it's doing us. It's his show now. Ruining my program. Hi. Nobody's here to receive your call right now. Just leave a message. We'll get back to you. Wait for the beep. Beep. What about the 
victims? What about my daughter? These animals kill our children and live off the state forever. I'm sure it's a corn nuts. It makes a mockery of justice, and it makes a mockery of my daughter's life. Turn up his joke. Turn up. What I want to say is, you ever seen a white man on death row for killing a black man? There ain't no such thing. This is a racist system. I am a political prisoner. I'm in prison because of the color of my skin. I'm to be executed because of my race. Uh oh. Give me the warden. I insist. Warden, I want you to get your men off the roof right now, or I will have Mr. Reyes eviscerate Miss Sheehan on national television. What's, what's eviscerate? Got her like a fish. Now? Not yet. Release Miss Sheehan. Kids, if you're watching, Mama's okay. Don't worry. I'll be home soon. Uh, this isn't real. It's, uh, it's a TV show. So uh, go to bed. And Sandra Marie, give your brother his cough medicine. I'll be home in the morning and everything will be okay. Okay? Let's talk to Miss Sheehan. Miss Powers, interview our Miss Sheehan. Dvorak, I'm not the enemy. I didn't do anything to you. Don't hurt me. Well, you are on the other side of the door, Miss Sheen. It's just a job. You know, I got kids to feed. Mm, like working in the post office. I know. Or uh, McDonald's or the Colonel's. Mm -hmm. And you look at people walking into that room like they're white meat or dark meat. Done extra crispy, of course. I have nothing against these people. Or you. Well, you should. You should, Miss Sheehan, because I am the very person that would like to visit your home. And guess <laughs> a sniveling brood of human larvae that have nurtured at your bovine bosom. <laughs> I know you, Sheehan. I know your life and those brats you bred. You don't <laughs> think. You just wallow in filth and eat and breathe and reproduce and eat and breathe and eat and breathe. Tell me, what is your opinion of the death penalty, Miss Sheehan? I don't, I don't have one. You don't have one. Well, you better have one. You better have an opinion, Sheehan. Think, think, because the thing I hate first in this life are the brain-dead cattle like you that overpopulate this planet. You're a breeder cow. A breeder cow. I have spent my life trying to eradicate your subspecies. Taking you out would be a pleasure. So think, she. Think or die. I think that's enough background for a proper interview. Cameraman, if you will. Ms. Joan Sheehan, a single mother, has been an employee at the Haviland State Penitentiary for less than a year. Her neighbors say she is a hard-working woman who spends most of her free time in the home. Turn up the sound! Turn up the sound! I are worried about their mother and uncomfortable with all the same media attention. She and children and their babysitter have been watching the events unfold. 
Welcome back to Live with Larry. A few moments ago, we witnessed the self-execution of Lorraine Biella and Kenny Nevins. A lot of politicians advanced their careers by screaming for the deaths of those two young people. But they cheated the executioner. Ultimately, however, they were cheated by everyone that they trusted. They didn't have to die. They were innocent. But that's nothing new, is it? I mean, we kill the innocent as a matter of course. It's part of our custom, our history. If Jesus Christ had been born in the 1950s, we'd all be wearing little gold electric chairs around our necks instead of crosses. Now, someone once said that it's better that 100 guilty men go free rather than one innocent man die. Just think, I could have been working at Kmart. I applied there too, but, but this job had better benefits. She and you talk too much. If I don't keep talking, I'll scream. Pay attention. You'll make a mistake. Lorraine Viella was legally insane when she killed her children. Examinations performed by three prominent psychiatrists who certified that she was legally insane were withheld by the prosecution during the course of her trial. Now, had that been revealed, Lorraine Viella today would either be free or in a mental institution receiving treatment. You can prove that? Well, I have documentation. I'm trying to prove a point here. So let her kill herself so you could make a point. Look, Miss Powers, you have taken yourself out of the equation. Hush. What's going to happen to my family? By the way, let's not forget to talk to They're all I got, my kids. They say that Americans vote with their I'm not some cosmopolitan career woman. I'm a mama. I'm a good mama. I got good kids. Up to five times. <sighs> What's gonna happen to them? In this prison, in the infirmary, there's a young man dying of AIDS. It's a disease he contracted in this institution, by the way. His name is Pepper Michaels, and he was with Kenneth Nevins on the night that the store owner was killed. Now, I have a statement from him that Kenneth Nevins did not commit that murder. He did not participate in any way. Now, Kenneth Nevins was so high on crack, he did not remember anything. But Pepper Michaels does. See, Kenneth Nevins wasn't even in the store when Pepper Michaels committed that murder. Kenneth Nevins was innocent. You bastard. Oh, an opinion from the neutral observer. It's amazing. You killed him, didn't you? It's a lie. Look, there you just record what documents. I tell you to record, all right? You just do your job. Let me see that stuff. Yo! Reyes! Hit the camera. The show must go on. And what do we make of the next fact? Hate everybody. When California ruled their death penalty unconstitutional. Got my reasons. Not me. People leave me alone, I leave them alone. That's my philosophy. Are we just locking away every criminal? That was my philosophy. So what is the purpose of the death penalty in uh, this country? Have you is really quit me? To crime? I oh, it's so. lonely at the top, huh? I doubt if any murderer thinks about the consequences when he or she's dead. Joel. Passion of the moment. Joel. Joel, what happened? We were going to change the world. Yeah, well, one of us gave up. And the other? 
nuisance. He never cared about anything anyway. So is it justice? Well, not by any means. Uh, if it were justice, everybody who committed a murder would die. But very few do. Simple fact. What did he care is about? There are over 20,000 murders in Germany. Whatever States. you cared about, the fact that you cared. Only 4,000 result in convictions. And 250 received the death penalty. Half of those are commuted. And they're not the worst offenders, mind you, just the ones with the worst lawyers. See, it's a lottery for the poor. Joel, be my audience. Give me someone to talk to one last time. Yeah, one more time. Now, there's only one reason for the death penalty. It's revenge. And if you, society, want to put yourself on the same level as those you condemn, then you, society, are the murderers. And I condemn you. It, Mr. and Mrs. America. Another exclusive. Live from Death Row, it's the Alana Powers Show. Stop. Well, Miss Powers, you're with us again. And I'm taking my show back. Death. Death's your bread and butter. I mean, you tease people with it on your show. Murder and torture with all the lurid details every night on your so-called reality TV. I and mean, you manage the seedy, sweaty, bloody little cockfight in the garage on a drunken Saturday night. Well, that's exactly what you've created right here, isn't it? What's your point, Dvorak? I am putting the death penalty under examination here, now. No. No, the subject matter is Lawrence Harwin, Dvorak, and we're here because you couldn't die quietly. You wanted a big splash of fireworks. Mm. The most celebrated criminal on death row. You said it yourself. Well. The most brilliant mass murderer. In American history, etc. But we know nothing about him. And as a producer and an interviewer, Mr. Dvorak, you're an amateur. <laughs> you know, Alana, you and I are very much alike. You know, well, I know you, you hate me, but did you ever think to yourself, I would kill to be famous? I did. See, and you have the nerve to condemn me. And we're both single-minded about our quest. We are obsessed with our careers. We're soulmates. Okay. You and me, one on one. Sheehan, help me get him out of this thing. For the last two hours, we've watched Lawrence Harwin Dvorak terrorize, manipulate, and assault. In addition, he has provoked two suicides. I think he is a coward and a fake. Look careful now. I still have the power here. Obviously. Now, Mr. Dvorak, do you want to live? Well, I don't have the usual preoccupation with living that most people have. Will you sit in this chair, or is this all a bluff? Um, well, I will sit in the chair when the time comes. Meaning? After Reyes and Silsby. Those two hoodlums will never volunteer for death. Me and Silsby have been thinking, and, uh... <clears throat> 
We're in a good position to negotiate right now. I mean, uh, government's not gonna want any more people popping off on TV. You wanna live like this? At least it's, it's living. Man can get used to anything. You picked the wrong crew, Mr. Dvorak. Two low rent, petty crooks. Reyes here, the poor, put upon, afflicted war veteran who spent most of his Vietnam tour in the stockade for drug offenses. Much like he had spent his earlier life. From the age of 12, he's been in and out of jail, always making excuses for himself. A broken home, lack of a job, no education. Vietnam is no more a legitimate reason for his criminal behavior than any other lie he's told. And the fact is, he is a lazy, amoral, petty thief who got too drunk to realize he had hit a man too hard and too many times and killed him. And Silsby. Mr. Silsby, the poor victim of racial subjugation. One of those brave soldiers in the war against racial discrimination. Is this the man who, when the paint on his new car got scratched, he went home, got a shotgun, and slaughtered the offending man? The man's wife, his two children? Blew away an entire family because the paint on his car got scratched. An entire black family. Are you the same man who shot and killed a black man, a black woman, and two black children? Now, where does that fit into your racial war, Mr. Silsby? Where? You pick two losers, they'll never sit in that chair voluntarily. Oh, they will. And now it's time to return to the agreed upon theme of our show. You're the star of the hour. And the question is, Mr. Dvorak, will you sit in this chair? You want a grand exit? Sit in this chair and I'll give you a moment they'll be talking about forever. We'll throw the switch. I will. You could do that for me. I said so yourself. We'll both go down in history. I'll be the most famous woman in television. Lana, we should have discussed this before. It would have saved so much unpleasantness. Your move.
trust the media. Silsby! Pull a switch! Come on, you ignorant bastard! Get back some of your own! Come on, you stupid nigger! Suffer, fool. Suffer. Right? You're a man. Do it. Do it. The way in hell is gonna print it on the metal rap on me, man. to try me for this. Uh, I'll plead insanity and uh, get off. Then I'll come visit my old friends. Alana will do lunch. Mr. Cameraman, I'll show you some pretty pictures. Miss Sheehan, I'd love to meet your family. Your children will be mine. One by one, I swear. I will take your children. Oh, you must. Dad! Save your children! This is Alana Powers. What we have just experienced... No. No, not experienced. Take two. What we have just gone through... My, my cameraman and, and I, Joel... I have to start again. This is Alana Powers. This is a lot of powers. I have to start again. Joel, I have to start all over again. Thank you.